personal finance PowerPoint presentation, Balanced Fund. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Balanced Fund, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by James Chen, updated June 11th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, strategies, tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investments, that typically being the fixed income, usually the bonds, the equities, typically the common stock. Also thinking about tools we might be using, help Helping us to invest like mutual funds, like ETFs, which possibly could help us to diversify with less of an initial upfront investment other than or as opposed to investing in individual stocks, individual bonds. Keeping that in mind, we're now asking, what is a balanced fund? A balanced fund is a mutual fund that typically contains a component of stocks and bonds. Mutual fund is a basket of securities in which investors can purchase. So remember, when we're investing as an individual investor, we might be putting money into individual stocks and bonds, but that can be difficult and expensive, hard to diversify with. Therefore, we might be using tools such as mutual funds and ETFs pooling our money together with other investors and then the fund manager using that pooled money to invest in a broader basket of funds allowing us the diversification which is great so typical balanced funds stick to a fixed asset allocation of stocks and bonds such as 70 stocks and 30 on the bonds so if we're picking one mutual fund so note that we could then use the strategy of having one mutual fund that is going to be widely diversified in stocks and bonds and hopefully diversified within stocks and bonds as our investment strategy that's a nice easy investment strategy to use if you're investing in say and using an ira or like a 401k plan oftentimes they're using the tools of this kind of like a mutual fund and then putting it under, I would look at it as an umbrella of the retirement plan, which has tax consequences to it. So note that the underlying tool basically is a mutual fund typically, even though it's under an umbrella, which has tax consequences when you're thinking about an IRA or 401k plan. So we can also use another strategy of using multiple mutual funds that give us more capacity to uh, have spe specialized investments in particular areas, segments, for example, or more uh, allocated to bonds than stocks, or we might use this kind of balanced fund strategy as our overall uh, fund, our main fund, and then maybe we have more heavily weight towards bonds or stocks or whatever we want to do with other funds, uh, using them kind of on the side and using the, that would be like a satellite kind of approach they've often uh, called it. So bonds are debt instruments that usually pay a stable fixed rate of return. So bonds to that fixed income side of things, not as exciting, not as much movement going on, but usually more dependable and reliable. The investment objective for a balanced mutual fund tends to be a mixture of growth and income. So if you're on the stock side of things, then the question is, well, there's a lot of stocks out there. How are we gonna be categorizing the investments on the stock side? We could have you know, uh, growth funds, index funds, what are the market cap funds? Are we just in the US stocks? What are the sectors we're in? Do we have foreign stocks and so on? So again, it's, it's still a wide area of investment when we're trying to get like a wide fund that's gonna be covering a bunch of different things. So, which leads to balanced nature of the fund. Balanced mutual funds are geared towards investors who are looking for a mixture of safety income and modest capital appreciation. 
understanding balanced funds. A balanced fund is a type of hybrid fund, which is an investment fund characterized by its diversification of, among two or more asset classes. The amounts the fund invests into each asset class usually must remain within a set minimum and maximum value. So you're not giving complete leeway to the fund manager to invest a lot more in one type or another, like bonds versus stocks, for example. They're usually going to be set within the constraints of the bond of the fund. Another name for a balanced fund is an asset allocation fund. Balanced fund portfolios do not materially change their asset mix, unlike life cycle funds, which adjust the holding to lower the risk as an investor's retirement date approaches. So remember, when you're looking at these different funds, do you want to have a fixed allocation that you're going to be going across? Or are you looking for a targeted goal where the allocation will change as you get closer to that target? Because remember, from a general theory standpoint, then you're going to be taking into consideration your time horizon and your risk tolerance level to determine the appropriate mix or the amount of risk related to the things that you're going to be investing in. So balanced funds also differ from actively managed funds, which may involve in response to the investors changing risk return appetite or overall investment market conditions. So the other thing we want to be considering is, are we investing in a balanced fund that's basically tied to indexes in some way, reducing the capacity for active management, which will typically be cheaper, or do we want to have some kind of active management involved within the constraints of the fund terms? elements of a balanced fund portfolio. Retirees or investors with low risk tolerance can utilize balanced funds for healthy growth and supplemental income. The elements of balanced funds include a mixture of stocks and bonds. So it's a nice way to get that mix between the stocks and bonds with one particular fund. Equity component. The equity component helps to prevent erosion of purchasing power and ensure the long-term preservation of retirement nest eggs. So we want to hold on to that nest egg and hopefully be generating revenue from it within retirement. The equity holdings of a balanced fund lean towards large equities such as the ones found in the S&P 500 index, which contains 500 of the largest publicly traded companies in the United States. So note that if you're having a more kind of conservative type of investment strategy, you typically are going to want the, the money and to like the bigger uh, companies because those are the ones that are, are less likely to have a huge dip. They're going to be more stable. So for example, if you're in retirement, for example, you might be looking for a fund that still has a mix between stocks and bonds, but you're looking to hold on to the nest egg and live off uh, the earnings of it. So you might want the larger companies that are being paying dividends in it. And of course, the bonds, which could be paying out the uh, interest for the fixed income. So balanced funds may also include dividend paying companies. Dividends are cash payments made by companies to their shareholders as a reward for owning their stock. So if we're in, say, retirement, for example, we're living off of our nest egg, the earnings of it, hopefully, which when you're thinking about equity investments, stocks would be dividends. Note, dividends are kind of like draws for a sole proprietorship or a partnership where the company, where the owner takes the money out for personal use. But in a corporation, then you can't have one stock having different dividends than the other stocks. They have to be uniform. Therefore, the dividend distribution is determined not by an individual stockholder, but by the company, board of directions, or management, and or management. And therefore, uh, the, the dividend policy is determined there. Just like with the dividends in terms of a sole proprietorship or partnership, the question is, do you want to take the money out and use it personally or invest it elsewhere? Or do you want to reinvest it in the company and then buy property, plant, and equipment, hopefully to generate growth in the future? Companies that are growing typically reinvest the dividends oftentimes, and hopefully they use it efficiently, which will increase the value of the company, which will be reflected in the stock price, which will be good for us. Companies that are more established, the larger companies, 
already have their infrastructure in place and might be more likely to be paying out the dividends. Those are the companies that might be good for people in retirement that are living off the income from the investment. So companies that consistently pay dividends over the long term tend to be well established and profitable. Bond component. So the bond component of a balanced fund serves two purposes. We got number one, create an income stream because the bonds have that fixed income component to, to them, oftentimes biannual or semi-annual interest payments, for example. Two, uh, tempers portfolio volatility, which is the price fluctuations from the equity components. So even though we might be in more stable equities like the big companies, there's still going to be more flexibility, more ups and downs than with the fixed income such as the bonds. So the bonds act to stabilize us to some degree. So investment grade bonds such as AAA corporate debt and U.S. Treasury provide interest income through a semi-annual payments while large company stock offer quarterly dividend payouts to uh, enhance yield. Also, rather than invest distributions, retired investors may receive cash to bolster their income from pensions, personal savings, and government subsidies. So while they trade daily, highly, highly graded bonds and treasuries don't usually experience wild price swings that equities may experience. So you can still trade the bonds, obviously, uh, but they're, they're still not going to have those big swings typically because of the nature of the underlying investment. As a result, the stability of the fixed interest securities prevents wild jumps in the share price of a balanced mutual fund. Also, debt securities prices do not move in lockstep with stocks and can move in the opposite direction. So in other words, a lot of things that impact the market negatively say for the stock market as a whole therefore diversification in the stock market would still lead to a decline in the portfolio might not have the same impact on the debt side of things oftentimes they're opposite but not always so you would think that when stocks go down maybe the bonds are doing better at that point in time you could have some times when something happens in the market where the stocks and the bonds go down and value, but you would think that the bonds would be hit a lot less severely than the stocks, which might fluctuate more severely. So still being a bit of a, of a, a safe haven or a, a bit of a hedge on the bonds. So this bond stability provides balanced funds with bullish uh, further smoothing out its portfolio investment return over time. Advantages of balanced funds. Because balanced funds rarely have to change their mix of stocks and bonds, they tend to have lower total expense ratios, so they're cheaper in terms of your management fees in general, uh, which represent the cost of the fund. Moreover, because they automatically spread an investor's money across a variety of types of stocks, market risk is minimized if certain stocks or sectors underperform. So you've got that diversification, which is nice. Finally, balanced funds allow investors to withdraw money periodically without upsetting the asset allocation. So now when you draw money out of your balanced fund, then it's not going to mess up your allocation. Whereas if you invested in, in multiple different, say, index funds, for example, or multiple different companies, and you've carefully balanced what you think is the optimal balance between stocks and bonds and different sectors, if you need to pull the money out, you need to sell something, then that's going to mess up your whole balancing and you'll have to rebalance. <laughs> you'll have to rebalance in some way. Or also, if you've got your money in different index funds, one, some of them might perform differently. Some might outperform. Stocks might outperform the bonds, for example, leading to you having more heavy weight in the stocks than in the bonds over time and then you would have to rebalance them. Whereas if you're in a balanced fund, you would think the fund would typically be balancing in accordance with the terms of the fund periodically, which could be a little bit more hands off, a little bit easier to do. So pros, diversified, constantly uh, rebalanced portfolio, low expense ratio, like that, I like both of those, less volatility, that's good, low risk, okay, good stuff, cons, fixed asset allocation. So that could be thought of as a con because you might say, hey, look, I want a different asset allocation at particular times, which means you might do that by saying, I want something like this as my underlying investment strategy. And then maybe in my projections about what's happening, if I think a certain sector is going to do good, or I want to put my money in high cap or low cap or something, or weight my investments differently, put more money in bonds than stocks, maybe then I buy other index funds on top of it 
to rebalance. That's going to be like that satellite kind of approach. This is your core thing. You've got other littler investments that are going to reweight your, your portfolio in accordance to whatever the whims that you think your genius moves are going to be to rebalance in a better way. So unsuited for tax shielding strategies. So the, the, uh, the usual suspects investments so you're going to invest in the typical kind of things that a lot of people are investing in possibly uh, safe but uh, stodgy returns safe but stodgy returns so disadvantages of balanced funds on the downside the fund controls the asset allocation not the investor which might not match an investor's tax planning strategy so if you've got your money into a particular fund it's going to have to invest in accordance to that fund and therefore you don't have as much control over the balancing components again you could deal with that in a couple different ways you, you could still use it and then have a, like other funds that you're trying to weight more heavily in for example for example many investors prefer to keep income producing securities in tax advantaged accounts and growth stocks in in uh, taxable ones but you can't separate the two in a balanced fund so when you think about the tax component to it, if, if, you, if you're getting, like if you're getting paid uh, the dividends and you're getting paid the, the interest and, uh, and you're not living on th those types of things because, because you're not in retirement, for example, you don't need those, you just wanna reinvest those at this point in time because you're trying to save, then it might be nice to have those components under the umbrella of say, a retirement account or an IRA because you might be able to defer the tax uh, to to a later point when you draw the money out. Whereas if you have the money that's the, the types of investments in like smaller cap stuff that is going to not be paying you a dividend, but hopefully it's going to grow through simply the the reinvesting of their earnings to to have a higher uh, a higher stock price that you can sell it in the future then you're not realizing the gain on those and therefore you might want those types of investments to be the ones that are outside of your retirement account because uh, they're not they're not going to be triggering income uh, as they are growing as they would if they were distributing dividends or interest but if you've got one fund that's balanced through both of them then you can't you can't do that more complex like tax planning that kind of planning by the way is probably going to have a more significant impact if you've got a significant investment you got a pretty good deal of money invested so that that dividends and the and the interest is, are going to have a uh, a higher impact on your tax on your taxes if your investment is fairly small then you might it might not be as big a concern for you so it's probably going to be aligned up to your income level also investors can't use a bond laddering strategy buying bonds with staggered maturity dates so one component if you're buying individual bonds is to try to stagger the maturity dates of the bonds uh, when you buy them so they become due at, at separate points in time and then you're buying them at different levels of interest rates uh, when you stagger them. So you can have a similar method that you might use if, if you're investing in like c certificates of deposits or something like that, another strategy that you can use. So this, uh, to adjust cash flows and repayment of principal according to their financial situation. So the characteristic allocation of a balance fund, usually 60% equities, 40 bonds, may not always suit an investor's financial goals since needs and uh, preferences can change over time. So clearly you got this allocation of 60-40, that's a generic allocation. Possibly that's a great allocation for the general purposes over a long period of time, but you might think that you want different allocations at certain point in times, which you might be able to rebalance that kind of allocation by using other funds, using that fund as your core fund, using other funds to say balance a little bit more in bonds possibly by having another index fund specifically in, in bonds that you can kind of rebalance with if you want to do something like that. Some balance funds play, uh, play it too safe, avoiding international or outside the mainstream markets, so, uh, which, can, which can hobble their returns. So you also got to think about, well, is my fund suitably diversified in my, to my taste within the U.S. versus outside the U.S., for example? And again, if it's not, you might be able to kind of change that a bit by using, still using it and then maybe using another fund that's allocated to some foreign 
place that you think would be good for balancing your portfolio as a total. So real world example of a balanced fund, you got the Vanguard Balance Index Fund, Admiral Shares, that's the VBIAX, has a below average risk rating from Morningstar with an above average reward profile. The fund's allocation consists of 60% stocks, 40% bonds. Over the past 10 years, as of April 30th, 2022, the fund has returned 8.73% annually. The Vanguard Balance Index Fund Admiral Share has an expense ratio of 0.07 and a $3,000 minimum investment amount. 